Significant digits is a concept you may have already come across in previous classes like chemistry or physics. I just want to run over it again real quickly here today. It's based on experimental values, that is to say the values that we might get if we were taking measurements in a laboratory setting or even in a field setting in our case. For example, I might measure the length of a piece of wood as 3.8 centimeters. That would be a pretty standard measurement accuracy based on a standard ruler. That is to say I could get one millimeter of accuracy out of that ruler. So 3.8 centimeters is two digits that are significant. Now if it was longer than that, for example, if by chance that it was say 15.2 centimeters, in this situation I still only have accuracy to one millimeter. But now I have three digits the 1, the 5, and the 2 are all significant digits. On the other hand, if I switch to a better measuring device, or a measuring device that can measure down to a tenth of a millimeter, like a vernier caliper, then that same block of wood that I measured at 3.8 centimeters, I might get a value of 3.82 centimeters. So this is two decimal places but three significant digits. And so their number of digits has told us there's more information, uh, more accurate information, in the measurement of that block of wood. A typical measurement on a, on a beam balance <clears throat> might be four digits. For example, that same block of wood might have a mass of 125.8 grams. Each of those numbers is significant and therefore there are four digits there. Now one of the things we want to worry about are leading zeros and trailing zeros and all of that depends on decimal place. For example, if this same beam balance was more accurate and I got 125.80 grams, then that is telling you that you know the mass of that block of wood to one one hundredth of a gram and so this zero, which is after the decimal place, so this is a trailing zero, trailing means it's at the end of the number, a trailing zero after the decimal place is significant. And so there are five digits in this example. On the other hand, if I told you that the mass of the block of wood was 100 grams, then there are two trailing zeros. Okay, both of these are trailing zeros, but there's no decimal place. And so in this scenario, we only have one digit, and that's the one at the very beginning. And what that means is that the block of wood could have 51, 55, 75 grams, but I've kind of ballparked it, if you will, given it a rough estimate as 100 grams, so that's not very significant. In fact, 125.8 grams, I might have put that block of wood in my hand and said, I think this block of wood has a mass of about 100 grams. And that's giving you a value that's pretty ballpark, not very accurate. And so the idea is that those zeros don't really hold much meaning. They're basically placeholders. It isn't 10 grams, it's 100 grams. Now trailing, excuse me, leading zeros are of a similar nature. So if I had, oh, let's say uh, a block of, well, it wouldn't be a block of wood, but maybe a very small piece of ore, it might have 0.013 grams of mass. Now in this case I have leading zeros, but these leading zeros are not digits. Only the 1 and the 3 are significant digits, and so this number has two significant digits. So zeros before the first non-zero number in a very small number like 0 0.013, those leading zeros are not significant. Zeros in the middle of a number are. So if I said 208 
grams, this zero here in the middle is significant. I know the value of this mass right down to one gram. And so there are three digits here in 208 grams. Now some values are going to actually be infinite in nature, and one of those is integer values. So for example, if we were talking about the total mass of all of the chairs in the room, and I would count the number of chairs in the room, if there are 24 chairs, that's not two digits. You might think of it as two. There's the two and there's the four. But that's really an infinite number of digits. That is to say, there are 24 chairs. You can't have, unless of course you've got the chair broken down into pieces, you don't have portions of a chair. There are 24 chairs in this room. Not 24.1, not 23.9, 24 chairs exactly, and therefore the number of significant digits in that value is infinite. The same thing holds true with defined values. For example, there are 5,280 feet in a mile. So later on when we're doing unit conversions, 5,280 feet is an exact value. So when I use it in a calculation, I don't consider that to be three digits, because remember trailing zeros are not significant. This is not three digits. This is an infinite number of digits. Any of the numbers that you get out of your book, especially in the diagrams where they might say one meter long or five meters long, you should assume those values to have three significant digits, unless the book specifies otherwise. If the book tells you that there's only two digits, or if it uh, tells you that there are many more than two digits, or it gives you a value with many more than three digits, then you should assume there are three significant digits in any of the calculations or values you use in book homework. Okay, this becomes important as we're doing operations, mathematical operations, especially multiplication and division. The question marks become a little trickier when we're doing addition and subtraction, and I'm not going to worry about that yet today. So let's say I am calculating a velocity. I know that something has traveled a distance of 1.8 meters, and the time it's taken to travel 1.8 meters is 2.37 seconds. So when I put this into my calculator, it's going to give me a value of 0 0.75949 367-0886. And the units here, I have meters in the numerator, seconds in the denominator, so that's meters per second. That's the number that my calculator has given me. But what I need to do is I need to look at the number of significant digits in the original problem. So 1.8 meters, that's two digits and 2.37 seconds, that's three digits. And so when I give a final answer, I'm going to use only two digits. That is to say, we always use the number of significant digits in our final answer and that are the same as the least number of significant digits in any of the calculated values or the values we use for the calculation. So in that scenario, I have two digits. Remember, the leading zero does not count, so it's the 7 and the 5. But I do want to look at the next digit, in this case the 9, to see whether or not I'm going to round off that 5 up or down. And since 9 is greater than 5, I'm going to round up. So as I report this velocity, I would get 0.76 meters per second. Now, just one cautionary note here. If I'm going to use this velocity later on, then I want to use all the digits my calculator gave me. But the final answer that I have after I've used that velocity would only be specified to two significant digits. For example, if I was to calculate momentum or kinetic energy, which use velocity, 
I would use all of the digits my calculator gave me to calculate that velocity. But the final momentum or the final kinetic energy would only be set out to two digits or less if something else had fewer digits. Let's look at this typical volume for a block of wood. Here are the three values given to calculate the volume. So I have the length, the width, and the height. And as I calculate out this volume, I note that the first value, 12.4, that's three digits. 3.85, that's three digits. And 8.11, also three digits. And so my calculator tells me that this is 387.1714. I have centimeters times centimeters times centimeters, so that would be centimeters cubed. But since the least number of significant digits in these values is 3, in fact it's the same for all of them, it's 3, this would be 387 cubic centimeters. Again though, if I were to use this value later on, let's say for calculating the density of that block of wood, I would use all of the digits the calculator has given me. So for example, Maybe the mass of the wood is 101.4 grams, but that's how many digits? That's four digits. And then I might divide this by 387.1714 cubic centimeters, because recall that is the product of these three values. When I get that final answer, I'm going to get a value of 0 0.26 and that's grams per centimeter cubed. But even though I see four digits here and seven digits here, I have to keep in mind that this seven digit denominator stems from three-digit values. And so I have three digits in the denominator. It's not really seven, it's really three. Four in the numerator. And so my final answer would be to three digits. But I still look at this eight, and that tells me to round off to 0 0.262 grams per centimeter cubed.